Let's take a look at how you can calculate an annualized return when you have periodic additional investments. So let's assume that on January 2nd of 2023, you deposit $10,000 into your account. Now that's negative because it's a cash outflow. And in, on January 2nd of 2024, you actually take out $18,000. Now, along the way, you've also made some additional deposits. Now, normally when you calculate a return, if you just had one deposit, that is a, um, a present value, and then no other deposits and, and a withdrawal, that's the future value, you can calculate the return as the future value divided by uh, the present value raised to the one over t power minus one. So you can calculate the return that way. And let's do that, okay? So let's calculate the return here. So return without the deposits. So we would say it's equal to this 18,000 divided by and it's going to be the negative of this. You need a positive number here. And it's just for a year, so 1 over t power is going to be 1 over 1. And we're going to subtract 1 from it. And we look and we say, oh, we got an 80% return, right? That makes sense. You made $8,000 on a $10,000 investment. It's 80%. But it's not really 80% because you made additional deposits here on March 1st of 2023, on April 3rd, on um, August 12th, and also December 20th. So you made a bunch of these different deposits of different amounts. So you can't say you got an 80% return. And, and people tend to get this wrong, especially you know, you might look, oh, I put $100,000 in the bank, and now I have $2 million in my account. But you forget, you've been contributing, for example, to your 401k every year, or actually every month probably, you know, for decades. So it's not fair to say, well, my 100000 grew to, you know, $2 million. In fact, there was a book uh, years ago, the Beardstown Ladies Investment Club. And there was this investments club um, with these women, and they got a lot of attention because they had this really great return. And, you know, the notion was that sort of this little investor who sort of looks at um, what they know, they can beat Wall Street. And that's sort of the Peter Lynch philosophy. If you know who Peter Lynch is, he was the... Um, he used to manage Fidelity's Magellan Fund when it was, you know, among the biggest and best performing funds in the country. And, you know, his attitude was, you know, you invest in things you know, and, and you can do better than the people on Wall Street. In fact, he wrote a book called um, One Up on Wall Street. So we think that the Wall Street insider has an advantage when, in fact, Sometimes a smaller investor, somebody working in an industry, will see a trend that nobody else sees. And he talks about how, you know, if you were in the auto industry, you might have seen Chrysler coming with the minivan. Now minivans are everywhere, but if you go back in time, we all had station wagons back then. Nobody had a minivan. And so a lot of these things, maybe you saw it first. You didn't even have to be a Chrysler dealer. You might have just seen it and noticed that, gee, people come into my Ford dealership and they want to buy a minivan and we don't have one. And that might have been a good opportunity to buy. So anyhow, they found out later that the Beardstown ladies forgot to include their additional investment. So it made their return look better. They still did do pretty well, I believe, but not as good as we thought. So how do you do this, right? So we got all these deposits here and we've got 18,000 at the end. And it turns out that we can use Excel to do this for us. There's an XIRR function that will account for these different times of deposit and will calculate the rate of return for us. So 
we're going to say equals XIRR, and it asks for the values. So the values come first, and then you put in the array of dates. And let's just format that into percentage terms. And you've still done pretty well, but the return is actually 32.87% as opposed to the 80% you would get if you just looked at the 10,000 and withdrew the 18,000 and ignored these additional deposits. So this is a great function to know. It allows you to do these kinds of calculations without uh, too much trouble, and it gives you, you know, the correct result.